Hi, I'm Jason Mears and I'm going to talk you through the key components of a VMware software defined data center. So first of all, I'm going to start with the hypervisor itself, vSphere ESXi. So this is the hypervisor that does software defined compute. That is taking processor and memory um, aggregating it into a pool and making it available for multiple virtual machines. So essentially what that allows us to do is take a single server that we can run multiple different virtual machines on, on top. So that's where the company started, that's where the product that we're probably most um, known for. Um, what I'm going to do then is attach that to a VMware vCenter server, which most people have been using for the last 15 to 20 years as the way of managing this environment here. So that's local management of this environment. As we, as we built out our product portfolio and added features, one of the next things that we added was vSAN, which is virtual SAN, which is uh, software defined storage. So this is where we take commodity hard drives and commodity flash drives, aggregate them into a pool and turn them into a software defined SAN, much like a traditional array that can, that can be consumed by VMware and virtual machines. Um, the other part to this is NSX, which is our software defined networking and security. So NSX takes the features that are traditionally found in a hardware based switch and, and turns those net, brings those networking functions up into the hypervisor where we've got a little bit more context and visibility than a traditional switch uh, or a traditional router. So that they are the core components of a software defined data center. What that gives you um, in simple terms is software defined infrastructure. Or if you're more um, inclined to uh, look at things like cloud native applications or the DevOps, uh, type of way of looking at things, you'll often hear them instead of calling it software defined infrastructure, they'll call it something else, which is infrastructure as code. All that really means is that you can create and build your environments using scripts, code, blueprints, or other kinds of automation. But what it gives you is a is an easy way to deploy, uh, manage, and and take care of the life cycle of virtual machines. So this is where we start with with a, with a simple software defined data center. One of the things you may also have seen is we've taken these three core parts of our software defined data center and turned that into a bundle called Cloud Foundation. So that's a simple way to buy these three products to give you software defined compute, storage and networking. Because the key part here is once we've got a virtual machine sat on a software defined data center, we could move that virtual machine to another data center and when we power it on or when we migrate it, it still works. And the key part to that is, is that the other data center is running Cloud Foundation. So this might be uh, data center one, this might be data center two. And as long as we're running a, a similar software stack at both sides, we can move and migrate virtual machines backwards and forwards between these environments. And when we, when we turn them on or migrate them, the storage is still present at the second site and the networking and security and the policies around that still work at the second site. So that could be our data center two. It could equally be a cloud provider that uses VMware Cloud Foundation. Currently, there are just over 4,500 VMware Cloud provider uh, partners. So that means, in addition to your own data centers, there are almost another 5,000 uh, VMware partners that you could move virtual machines to and from without having to reconfigure um, and even move them up and down this way again too. So we've got real mobility of virtual machines by having a software-defined data center. We can also build machines in the mega clouds, the things like native AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. The problem with building 
things in those in the native form is that once you build something in one of those mega cloud providers, you can't move it back. But we can we can build stuff in there, but it's it's kind of a one way journey. I guess the other place where customers might put applications and services is in a true SaaS model. So if you look at this here, I guess what we're saying is that the likelihood is our customers will have its stuff in their own data center or a second data center. There might be a VMware cloud provider type data center, or you then might start getting cloud native applications, which have been specific, written specifically for the cloud, going into native AWS, not the VMware flavor, into Azure or Google Cloud Platform. Or you might even have customers going straight to a SaaS model. But certainly for the next few years, we're, we're going to see the majority of applications still in a local data center, uh, either data center one or data center two, or increasingly moving to a VMware cloud provider that's running the same software stack because this stuff is easy to move, whereas putting stuff in here requires a rewrite, rewrite or a brand new application. So we've got multiple data centers and multiple places that we can we, we can move applications and services to. What we really now, now need at this point is a cloud management platform, a central source of truth for monitoring, managing, deploying, um, costing, all of these. All of these. So we've got a, a cloud management platform called vRealize. And this can talk to local data centers, whether that's our own ones, whether it's in a cloud provider, whether it's a mega cloud um, provider, but we can see virtual machines in here and give you a single source of truth across all of that. So the components that make up our, our cloud management platform or vRealize Suite are the operations component, which looks at things like health, efficiency, waste, those kinds of things and capacity. We then have the automation part, which can build and deploy things to any of these data centers using something called blueprints or templates. We then have another part of it, which is the business side of things, which tells us the cost of running an application here or here or here or here, and even what it would cost to move something from here to here this afternoon or next week, just so we can do comparisons of either where to move things to or where to initially deploy them. And then we have logging and correlation. So we have vRealize operations, vRealize automation, vRealize business, and vRealize login site as the cloud management platform. We can also add another component here, which is vRealize network login site, which performs a similar kind of function, um, but on the NSX and network type components. So although vRealize network insight is a, a companion product or a bolt-on product to NXS, NSX, in my mind, it's still part of this cloud management platform or this cloud management suite. So that's how we build a local data center. Multiple data centers have this kind of flexibility to move things around between them, but also have a central management platform which we can use to uh, manage, monitor, cost, deploy, and, and correlate events across all of that. What you will see is lots of these products here are also available as a it's a VMware cloud hosted. So if a customer wants to go directly to these, but as a SaaS type service, there are also equivalent offerings from VMware to do this as a SaaS type service. So that's kind of how we build data center, multiple data centers have mobility between them, how we monitor and manage them, either using on-premise technology or SaaS type technology, but once we've got all these virtual machines and these applications and services, the next bit comes, how do we actually get those to end users? Because none of this is actually worth anything unless we deliver an application or service to an end user. So let's talk about um, app delivery. Let's talk about mobile device management and then digital workspace. So in order to get these applications and services to end users, we might want to deliver that application to an end user on a desktop or a tablet. That's the product suite uh, or the group of technologies that we know as Horizon. That delivers applications and services to end users. 
we then have the uh, mobile device management or, or um, tablet management and, and even Windows 10 type management. That's all done through a watch. But when it comes to actual a, a, a real digital workspace, which is a next generation workspace for delivering um, any application to any device from any data center, what we're then looking at is something called Workspace One, which is essentially these two components plus some identity management. Um, so we have Horizon for delivering apps, AirWatch for managing devices, and if for digital workspace, we use something called Workspace One, which also has the identity part to the applications and device management components here. So that's how we build data centers. That's how we build multiple data centers with mobility. This is how we manage them or have visibility across them. And this is how we get them to end users. So for most people who started with this little part here, managed from here, sometimes this can look a little bit overwhelming to them that there's so many pieces and so many components what they're looking for is some guidance or some advice on, on how do you build the best practice version of this or how would you start to build this uh, from the ground up or in addition to the stuff you already have. So we also have something called VVDs, which are VMware validated designs. So this is a, a reference architecture built by some of the smartest people at VMware around how you deploy all these components in a highly available fashion um, so that you can have a, a, a multi data center type environment with high availability and fault tolerance that can also burst up to the hybrid cloud with all these components and even the delivery to end users on the top. So as a starting point for this, a VVD or a VMware validated design is often the place where people look to when they want a reference architecture for building out these capabilities. And now onto the people side of the equation. So there are a range of services in addition to the technical stuff. So we have acceleration and advisory services, operation transformation services, and professional services. So acceleration and advisory services focus more on the, the what. What should we be building? What should we be focusing on? So in my mind, I tend to think about this as, as what direction should the business be following to remain relevant for the next five to 10 years. And I think of examples here as you know, the, the kind of things that Blockbuster should have looked at that Netflix did much better, the, the kind of game changer type stuff. So this is where should the business be heading? What kind of technology should be looking at without being too specific about specific products and versions? Just just how would this organization stay relevant in a, in a digital age? The next part from that is OTS. This is more about people and process. So the example I always think of here is Imagine that we've got all this software defined data center, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud. We've got all the vRealize suiting for managing and monitoring it. And we've, we're delivering all these applications to users on uh, any application, on any device, from any data center. We've got this ability to enable people to work from tablets um, that may be a different operating system that the application they're using is from. So it might be a Windows application delivered to an Android, uh, Android tablet. So you've got all this flexibility here. But if the business, let's say the business here is, is traditionally a, a desktop PC type environment where people go to the desk every single day and they pass pieces of paper or forms around between each other. If you put in all this great technology here and people still go to the desk every day and they still pass pieces of paper around, it's just that now instead of it being a full PC, it's now a thin client much smaller computer and if we've delivered it over VDI or something like that, you've missed the benefit of providing any application to any device anywhere in the world or from any location. You've missed the point that people can work remotely or do things electronically. So this is more about once you've invested in all this technology, how do you make sure you get the best out of it? And then the other part of it is PSO, which is delivery, which is us or VMware professional services delivering and installing this stuff for you, either for you or with you. I personally think it works better when we deliver things with the organization, kind of teach a man to fish rather than just doing it for them. But professional services is how you get things built to best practice uh, by qu skilled, qualified people. So if we were to cut back to what we've got again here, this is the how we provide the platform for providing applications and services. This is the management platform for monitoring, managing, costing, automating, correlating, all those kinds of things. 
This is how we deliver applications to end users across multiple devices. This is how we design the environment and this is how we deploy it and, and actually implement it. So again, if I was to cut back here, I would say, if I wanted to summarize everything at the bottom, I would say that this is consistent infrastructure. I would categorize this cloud management platform as being consistent operations. And this part at the top is about getting applications to end users. So it's about app delivery to mobile devices. And then we've got the piece in the middle with the design and the deploy. So again, that was the simple overview to Software Defined Data Center, how all the component pieces fit together. Thank you very much.